Welcome back to the channel, party people. My name is Zero Wilson, and today in this video, we'll be talking about different ways on how to price your web design services. I'll go through each of these methods, I'll explain the pros and the cons, and then at the end of the video, I'll be giving you guys my opinion on what I think is the best way to price your web design services. How should you charge your customer? This is this is fun, you know, and I'll give you guys a few methods, and I'll give you my personal opinion on what is the best method to charge your clients. Let's go ahead and talk about the different pricing models. These should differ depending on your brand. I don't know if you're trying to attract very large ticket clients or just, you know, mom and pop shops. Depending on your brand, you should charge a different price, okay? And that'll kind of be up to your discretion to charge prices, kind of depending on your brand and how you want to present yourself, all right? These prices will also depend, vary depending on your experience, niche, type of website, and features. Now, guys, I'll go ahead and give you the same advice I gave other people when they are building their other uh, services. If you're an amateur, if you're a beginner, don't pretend that you're a professional. Just be honest. Just saying, you know, we're, I'm, we're just, uh, we're a new web design company. We're getting started out. Uh, you know, we did a lot of work for these clients. They're really happy. And, uh, you know, this is uh, our work. And, you know, what do you think about it? Now, if you go into someone and you say, well, you know, I'm a big hot shot. I build $50,000 websites and stuff like that. And later down the road, they ask for something that's big hot shot feature or functionality and you have no idea what they're talking about, you're gonna look very stupid. You're gonna look like an amateur and they're gonna know it. it's gonna come out and you're gonna look really bad and you could get a bad review and people will start talking negatively about your business. So just be honest, okay? Just tell them if you're getting started out, I'm a beginner and I'll work very hard for you. If you are experienced, just tell them we're experienced, you know, like, yeah, you know, we've made some websites and you know, we think we can really help you guys out, you know? See how I talk? I should I should just be a salesman full time, you know? <laughs> like I love this stuff. But uh, yeah, so don't act like a big hotshot if you're not a big hotshot, all right? I'll just, I'll, I'll leave it at there. Here we go. First, we have flat fixed rates. This is one method, all right? So method one is flat, flat fixed rates. So we have like the basic website, right? 500 bucks, right? Three to five page, right? Premium, 1500 bucks for like a five to 10 page website. Premium plus maybe like 15 pages with functionality or custom, something that's just a little bit more custom and unique. You know, like I had to build like a tarot card website once for some lady and that was like, that was scope creep. It was, it was terrible. It was, it just kept, the project kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger as we went on. And I was like, lady, I only charge you like three grand. And this is like turning on to be like a three month project, you know? But uh, yeah, so you can go with the, the flat fixed rate. This is actually a pretty standard rate. A lot of companies do this. Um, my personal opinion on it, I don't think it's a bad option. I think it's a, uh, it's a suitable option. Uh, I preferably would go with custom pricing or flat fixed rates, but, uh, yeah, this is actually, that's something that's doable. It's not something crazy. Uh, but these rates will obviously fluctuate depending on your experience and also your brand. The hourly rate, let's talk about hourly rate. You can also charge hourly rate. Let's say, for example, you're working at $20 an hour. You can estimate the hours for the project and let them know what this would be or like an estimate. Now, what are the pros of this? Well, it's more security for you, right? So you can charge the hours. You know how much you worked and you can say, well, I worked this hour, so this is how much you should pay me, right? Makes sense. With more experience, it'd be easier to understand what the cost would be. So as you do this more and more, you develop, you learn more, and you're saying, oh, a 10 page website? Oh, I know that's gonna be uh, this many hours. So it's this price, you know what I mean? So it kind of gives you like, you're building experience there. And number three, we have more practical. So with this method, you can work at your pace and get paid. So uh, it's just a little bit more, you know, it's more practical. It just makes more sense, right? Now, there are two cons about this pricing model that I personally don't like either. Creates tension. The clients can't see you work and doesn't know what you're doing, right? Like me as a designer or me as a customer, I, I really can't see, you know, the hours you're working and I don't know how long it takes. So I'm really left in the dark here and I kind of don't like that feeling. Number two, client is left in the dark with the pricing. So again, you know, uh, if you're not experienced, you're just gonna tell them, oh, this will probably take some time and maybe it'll be this much. You know, it's kind of not convincing as a client. I'm gonna say, yeah, I don't know about that, man. You might be trying to screw me over here. I don't really know. So uh, that is the cons of it. I personally don't like hourly rates because it's easier to sell a customer a price than no price, plain and simple. All right, now we have option number three, custom pricing. I do like this a lot. 
So custom pricing is a popular method because it gives you more time to estimate the cost of the project. It also gives you more time, more room to price projects a little higher than expected for extra profit, all right? Now here are the pros. Depending on your client, you can charge more money, right? So that's also, that's a, that's a good one. It makes the client feel like they are getting more. So for example, you can say, well, we're gonna put together this big package for you and it's gonna be a custom project and it's gonna be, it's gonna be amazing. And when you say like custom and uh, a custom project, a custom websites, you know, as a client, I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm getting my own personal custom website. You know, I, I feel good, you know, and that's really uh, what you're selling there. And number three, it gives you more time to sell your client by offering services and packages. So let's say, for example, you give them the custom pricing. You can also add in the recurring revenue plans saying, well, you know, this is the big custom website you're getting and we'll also create a custom detailed SEO package for you that will boost you to the top of the search engine and get you money, 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 money. You know, and they're just like, okay, that sounds good. I want that too. Versus hourly rate where you're like, oh yeah, it's gonna be hourly rates. And then, uh, oh, oh, do you want SEO? <laughs> you know, it's like, it doesn't sound good, but this is like, you get a custom plan. We'll give you the SEO package. We'll give you the, the, the custom uh, boosted Google plan. You know, it's, it's a great way to sell your clients. So the cons, let's take a look at this. Now this could sort of be a pro just depending on how you look at it. And I was talking this with my other guy and we were just kind of going back and forth, but I'll explain why I put it as a con. So it helps you without cheap clients. Now that is a good thing. However, if you are someone that is charging a lower rate, you could lose that client because they might not want that big custom website, right? They just want something small and they want a price and that's all they want. So if you do try to sell them too hard, you could lose your client. And that's happened to me once or twice. You know, this is debatable right here, but I just wanted to present the argument that uh, custom pricing sometimes can deter people away from it, saying, no, no, I just want a $2,000 website. You know, no, 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 I don't want it, man. You know, so that's just how it is. Now, the customer may feel like you are overcharging them. With custom pricing, you're presenting a price and they don't really have anything to go off. They don't know if that's expensive or not. So they can be like, well, you know, I want the pricing table, you know? Like these are more geared for people who are like, lower end ticket clients who want the pricing tables like Wix, you know? So this can make people feel like, you know, I, you know, how come Wix charges a little bit and you're charging me this much? You know, like it, it can make them feel like you're overcharging them, but that is just the con of custom pricing. But I personally, I would recommend custom pricing. I think it's great. And also flat rate, flat rate's also really good. Per page pricing is another model, but I would highly recommend not to do it. Uh, Per page is another approach, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's an outdated way of selling web design services. It might also cause conflict and it just mainly has cons, right? That's basically saying uh, it's gonna be $500 per page. That's what you're saying. So if there's five pages, that's $2,500, right? So let's talk about the main cons of doing this and why I don't really recommend it. So the home page and the contact us page are significantly different. Let's be honest. The home page is going to be a lot more harder to make than the contact us page. And it wouldn't be fair to charge the client the same price as the home page and also the contact us page, because obviously there is way less work required for the contact us page. It's like maybe just a plugin and some colors and you're all set. Uh, the client might think you didn't add enough content on the page. So let's say for example, if they are, if you're paying per page or if they are paying per page and you know, you make the about us page, but it's not long enough. They're going to say, Hey man, like this doesn't have enough content. This sucks. Like I paid 500 bucks for this. Like this is a joke. You're a joke. You know, <laughs> there you go. You just lost your client. So, uh, that's another thing that I ran into. I did this myself one time and I did have that same experience and there is no personal connection. It feels like this is strictly a per page basis. There's really no like, there's really no like uh, clientele here. It's just like, oh, this is per page and that's it, you know? But with custom pricing, you can say, you know, we're gonna make this custom for you. This is gonna be great. We're gonna tailor it around your brand. It's gonna be beautiful. Here it's like, well, this is just per page, sir. And $500 per page. You have the $500 per page. It just doesn't have that same connection with the customer. So I don't really like it. So those are the four different options for pricing plans. Personally, I like custom pricing and I also like like the flat fixed rates. The reason why I like this one is because people can visually see the price and they they can just pick from a plan that works for them and you know they're getting what they paid for and they don't feel screwed over. 
Uh, custom pricing, you can go ahead and charge them more money and you can upsell them different services, but also, you know, provide them with a really good website. So I'm not just saying like, oh, just, just overcharge your clients more, but uh, if they're happy with their website and they're happy with what they paid for, then that's all that really matters. So I do like custom pricing and I also do like uh, flat fixed rate. Hourly rate, I'm not really a big fan of, and per page pricing, I'm not a fan of this either because this is a very uh, easy way to create conflict with the customer. Now, the last pricing is going to be setup fee and monthly plan. Now, this is sort of a very risky approach, but I have seen businesses do this for clients who are really low budgets, but uh, it really depends on you know how, how much you wanna spread your risk factor. So uh, this method is getting more and more popular. Many websites like Wix have this approach, but you are not Wix. So I just wanna make that very clear, okay? So you can start this project for $2.99 and have an ongoing monthly payments. This can help evenly spread over the price of the project and might help users who can't afford one large sum. For this method, I would hold on to the domain on your name. Now, the reason why I say this, is because let's say they want a website, right? Now, personally, I would go ahead and buy the domain and I would have it under my personal name, right? And if I completed the website and they completed the payment in the contract, I would tell them, if you completed all the payments, we will give the domain over to your name, okay? So that's how you can kind of reduce your risk factor here. All right, now let's talk about the pros and the cons of this method. The pros, easier payment plan for low-income customers. Yeah, that's true. Recurring revenue is always good. It is, it's always a good thing. Easier to sell web design services. So you can like kind of charge like a website for $8,000, but you can spread it up on payments. You know, you can, you know, break it up and this might actually uh, help the client pay for, you know, pay for the website. Cons it's less money up front, and that's always a risk because if you build an $8,000 website and you're charging them 500 bucks a month, it's gonna take you a while to get all your money, right? So just, just be mindful about that. And number two, now this can also be a pro and con depending on how you look at it. So let me explain. This can cause more support because the client is paying monthly. Now in the client's brain, they're saying, well, I paid $8,000 for the website and it's gonna be spread over a few months, right? Therefore, this should also include technical supports and this support and that support. No, you have to tell them saying, look, uh, this payment plan is strictly for the website only. If you want technical support, hey, just throw on another $100 a month something like that. So um, it can help you get more recurring revenue for your clients, but at the same time, you need to be upfront with your client and tell them if they don't want technical support or they don't want a maintenance plan, then this payment plan is only for the websites and not for personal support, okay? So it could be a pro and a con just depending on how it all works out with your client and uh, what they can afford. And number three, there could be issues if the payment stops or the credit card gets declined. Let's say the client goes broke or their card declines or they just don't wanna pay the website no more. That's a big risk and that is the main risk of this strategy. So it can help you guys more because you guys can charge more for a website and spread it out. But if the client doesn't afford it or if they don't wanna pay no more or if their card stops working, you're gonna have issues there. So that's kind of the biggest con with this payment plan. Now, if you're gonna ask me right now, Daryl, which plan would you make for your web design business? I'm just getting started out. Well, I would definitely go with the custom pricing, right? Because this gives you enough time to, uh, you know, create the project, create the budgets, find out how much it's gonna cost you, and then you can set your price accordingly. I do like this. It also gives you the ability to upsell your clients, and it does also give them the custom made websites just for them. It makes them feel a little bit more special. So I do like this method. Also, flat fixed rates. This is also a very good uh, method. I like this because people can visually see what they're getting, and I do like that. Uh, I don't like hourly rates because I'm left in the dark too much as a client. I also don't like per page. I think this is uh, very outdated. Uh, setup and monthly plan. Uh, I, I do like this a little bit, but it's it's very risky, you know, like it's a very big risk to do this, but you can charge more money since you're spreading it out over a long term. So it just really depends on the integrity of your client if they're gonna make the payments. So that's really up to you. Uh, I'm gonna stay neutral on this one. <laughs> I can't really uh, give you an honest 100% answer, but uh, if you wanna go that route, go for it. But let me know in the comments what you guys think about these pricing plans and also which pricing plan you have for your web design business. My name is Daryl Wilson and I will see all of you party people in the next video, guys. Take care.